Hi guys, it's Omer from MMOHot.com and I'm going to do a first impression gameplay video for Ace Online, a 3D sci-fi shooting MMO published by Super Games. Now I'll spend about 5-10 minutes running around, change the game out, make some comments. If you want to play Ace Online or just learn more about it, check out the full review on MMOHot.com on the link on the right sidebar. There we go. I can go ahead and create a character over here. I just made a dude over here real quick to check out the game settings. But let's go ahead and make another one. Let's look new over here. Alright, it has some voice acting. Alright, basically what this guy is over here is a jack of all trades kind of class. You can see over here his stats. This guy over here is an assassin because he can he's fast paced, uh, he attacks fast, he does a lot of damage but he has low shields. This guy over here is basically a tank. He can absorb a lot of damage and he does a lot of damage. And this last dude over here, the M gear, is basically just a support class. But I'm going to go ahead and play the assassin class over here because I like optimal damage. I'll just go ahead and make this guy. It's cool that there's some voice acting over there. Let's go ahead and log on to this dude over here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and skip the tutorial, but I do recommend you check it out if you're new to the game. Alright, basically this is introducing the game's uh, two factions, and it's kind of doing it in a very incoherent, broken English way. So we're going to go ahead, go ahead and skip this for now. Now basically the player in this game just takes control of a starfighter called the Gear, which is basically your big ass plane in this game. We welcome and you to I like to think of this game as a... Army oh my god, shut up. Center. Go away. Yep. Alright. I look at this game as almost like a Star Fox Online because it plays a lot like Star Fox. But basically as soon as you get into the game over here, you're in this hangar bay. And you can see your character and walk around and see other newbies over here. But you get introduced to the game's first quest right away, called the Flight Examination. So let's go ahead and hit start on that. And that should get me outside mission town right away. Alright. The first mission is obviously just to leave town, so I just did that. And I am the Stone's Rune over here. Controls are pretty simple. You move around with the mouse. And uh, you left clicking shoots your first weapon. And right clicking shoots your special weapon or your missiles. But I need to go a little bit close to that guy first for me to lock on. Now firstly, I can, I can point out right away, the graphics are quite good for a game like this. Uh, gameplay is very smooth, very fluid. Oh, I missed that guy. Alright. Now basically what I have to do right now is just kill a bunch of these newbie monsters. Low level monsters. I just gotta lock on this dude over here. And these first few quests are almost like a tutorial for you. Even though I skipped the tutorial, these are pretty easy too. And what I do like about this game right away is it does have a lot of direction. As soon as you log into the game, it tells you exactly what you need to do and where you should be. Where's this other lock on? Alright. Let's kill this dude over here. If you hit spacebar, you accelerate. Back, of course, slows down on the S key. WSAD are useful too for turning and moving around. If I tap D twice, I'll do a barrel roll. Which can be useful in dodging missiles sometimes. Now, this game's main attraction is its PvP. But unfortunately, you really won't be able to experience that until way late game, like level 40 plus. Although the game's level cap is level 100 plus, so. There's a lot of content in the game. And I'm just in one map right now. I need to kill a few more of these dudes. There's luck, we, I think we, no, we lost our luck on that guy. Now back on the topic of the game's direction. There's actually over 100 quests in the game, and those are the game's missions. You can, you know, you can just activate those right away when you're in the hangar, so. There is a lot of direction, you'll always know where you're going. And again, I really like this game because it's incredibly unique. There's very few games like this. And I, actually, I think this is the only MMO like this. It's fast paced. And you're action in an airplane, which is pretty cool. Just going to kill this guy over here. And you can see in the top left over there, I can't really highlight it now, right over here. I have ammo for my primary and secondary weapons. And there's even a fuel gauge at the top left, which you should keep an eye on. And I have to kill, let's see what I have to kill at the top right for my quest. Let me face this guy off and I can see. My quest objectives are at the top right. And when I, oh, I did level up over here. Let me just go ahead and show you guys the level up. If I click B, I can just stop in midair. And if I click C, V over here, I can see my stats. And everything is clearly outlined over here, my character stats. And I can see all my attributes in the game. Attack, defense, evasion, fuel, spirit, and shield. And I'm going to go ahead and pump my attack. Because it helps a lot. Let's go ahead and click... X over here and go right back to moving. I killed six uh, kill mark of firefighter. I, I killed six of these dudes and I need to kill one of these other dudes now. I need to kill a bomber. I killed all fighters. I need to kill bombers. There's another. There we go. There's a bomber over here. 
And what I don't like though is the game sort of locks on to monsters that you really don't need to kill sometimes. Because I already completed my objective for killing uh, fighters, but it still locks them off for some reason. And these first few quests are incredibly easy. There's absolutely no way to fail these. Because the monsters don't even attack you back. They kind of just you know, fly around. Just wait, for, wait to be shot. <laughs> They're actually almost like flying XP pinatas. Because they don't do anything. They just wait to be shot. Good for me though. Let's kill it. There's a fighter over there. This, this is taking a lot longer to complete than I thought because it's locking out to these bombers for some reason. Let's find some easier crap. Or my bombers I need to kill. I killed plenty of these fighters already. Alright. Let's go kill that fighter anyway. Now, the game's quests do get more difficult and the monsters actually do start attacking you back later on. But overall, it's pretty easy killing these monsters because... As, as they get more difficult, the, you know, you actually adapt to the game as well and you learn to control a little bit better. So it's very difficult to actually die on these quests. Early on, that is. And the quests do take you around the game's map a little bit more. And there's actually over 50 different maps. Well, over well over 50 different maps, actually. So the game world is quite big. But the game's main attraction, as I said, is its PvP. And, you, you know, with a game like this, you can just imagine how fun the PvP would be. It's going to be fast-paced and it supports up to 100 vs. 100 combat. And the two factions in the game can actually each elect their own president. And basically the highest, the most powerful guild in the server can choose to be the president. And that guy's pretty much like the leader of, the, leader of your faction. Kind of like the president of the leader in Gunzu. He can sort of coordinate your attacks. He gets access to the most special weapons in the game and most powerful stuff. He can even communicate with the other faction's leader for you know, diplomatic agreements and such. Diplomatic agreements, that is. Uh, the game offers a quite a bit and I mainly like it because it's unique. Because frankly, too many of these MMOs are way too similar to each other, and just seeing a unique game always gets me excited. And this game is fast-paced, it's fluid, and I finally completed this quest. Mission clear. It should bring me right back into the game's docks. Alright. And after every one of these missions, and you return back to your station, you basically have to refuel over here. You can see your stats, this will restock my ammo, restock my weapons, and this will restock fuel. And I didn't really use anything else or get hit, so I click supply, I pay a little bit of money, and I'm good to go. Cancel that, close. Basically, I'm presented with another Mission quest right away. Please check your inventory for your reward. I basically just got a reward for that. It should be one of these items. But apparently, it's nothing good. So I was going to hit the second mission and click start. Stone's Rune. Now, the game is actually, each of these rooms where I'm in right now has two channels. A PvP on mode and a PvP off mode. And if you try to quest and just kind of level up on your own, I suggest you don't play on the PvP one. But you can't switch at any time. The game's graphics are great, like I said, and it does support widescreen resolutions and uh, no, all sorts of resolutions. One big complaint I have with the game, though, is a lot of the newbie areas and the beginning areas are completely empty, which is unfortunate because it's a really fun game, and I kind of wish a lot more people played. Let's so kill more watches over here. And I think the guys behind the game, Super Games, are doing a pretty bad job because what they what, what they basically did was create two servers. So, don't, having two servers basically isolates the player base into two. So, I think they should really combine those two servers to make one bigger server. And in a game like this with a low population, it makes a lot of sense to do that. I can see like games like you know, World of Warcraft and Rooms of Magic having many servers because they're incredibly popular. But this, they should definitely combine the servers. Kill these overwatches over here. And these guys should definitely fire back. They kind of just die and chill there. I still have 20 or 30 missiles, so I have plenty of ammo. Ammo rarely runs out unless you're just questing for a long time and forget about it. Kill this watcher over here. And you really get, you know, you get used to the controls pretty fast in this game. Alright. I mean, if you're, into, if you're into a game like this, it's definitely worth checking out because it's really the only MMO shooter where you're, you know, you're in the air flying a plane. Go kill this dude. I really wish I could show you some of the more intense PvP battles, but that's only available late game, so you really won't get a chance to experience that unless you play the game for a while. Now, questing is pretty good because it gives you—you know, you'll basically have quests to do all the way up to level 40, no problem. I mean, leveling is actually pretty fa pretty fast-paced until then. It does slow down incredibly though at level 40 and even more at level 50. 
I, you know, if you fire your weapons too much, it does overheat, so you do have to wait for it to cool down a little bit. So you can't constantly keep your finger on the left mouse button. The game is played mostly with the mouse, but again, WSAD are important because D sort of breaks and uh, A spins around. And you have a lot of hockeys on here as well. The only game I can really compare Ace Online to is Star Fox, but with MMO elements. So if you're into something like that, the game is well worth checking out. Anyway guys, if you guys want to learn more about Ace Online or just play it yourself, check out the full review on MMOHut.com on the link on the right sidebar. Later guys.